Can you tell people who talk too much to stop talking? I mean, you could, but you would probably offend them, and we definitely don't want to be rude. Ugh, conversation hogs, am I right? Wouldn't it be nice if there was a strategy for speaking up when someone starts to hog the conversation? Well, you're in luck because we've got one for you. We're actually gonna approach this problem from two vantage points. First, we'll look at it as the person who wants to interrupt the chatterbox. Then we'll look at it from the perspective of someone who doesn't necessarily have anything to say, but notices the conversation is being dominated by a single person to the exclusion of others. Remember, a conversation is only a conversation when everyone has the chance to voice their thoughts. If just one person is doing that, that's a speech. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with speeches. But more often than not, we're looking for a conversation. So stick around to see how we ensure that we get a word in edgewise. What is up, Explorers? Mary Daphne here of Explorning.co, where we believe social skills are the key to the good life. What is the good life? It's a life where you call the shots, you have a crew you can count on, and you, my friend, are on a mission that you care about. All right, so if you're the person who wants to speak and there's someone hogging the floor, what do you say to jump in? How can you signal that it is your turn to speak? Well, I have three letters for you. T-R-P, Transition Relevance Place. This is a term from the field of conversation analysis. It indicates a point of completion at the end of an utterance. This is the time at which another person can jump into the conversation and speak. So in order to get the chance to speak, you need to be on the lookout for a TRP. Let's now examine a few examples of transition relevance places so that we know when we can jump into the conversation. When we went to Japan, we had the best mochi. That's a complete utterance. Now, you wouldn't want to jump in at Japan because the speaker hasn't finished the point of the statement. But after mochi, there's a natural point where you can jump in. That is your TRP. If you don't choose to jump in, then the speaker will likely continue with another utterance. And that is okay if nothing comes to mind. But what if you wanted to hear more about mochi? You could say something like, I absolutely love mochi. Do you have any idea how they make it? Or to the contrary, what if the topic of mochi totally bores you and you would much rather hear about the city that they were in? You could go with, you know, I'm not wild about mochi, but tell me more about Tokyo. The point is by identifying your TRP, you can guide the conversation toward your interests. On the other hand, if you miss your TRP, you cede control to the speaker and who knows when your next opportunity to speak may come. For all you know, you might be stuck listening to an elaborate story about the intricacies of mochi making for the next five minutes before you can signal that you would like to change topics. Now let's look at another TRP example. A lot of people didn't love the final season of Game of Thrones because it was fast paced. But I've got to tell you, I really enjoyed it and I think they did a good job wrapping up loose ends, particularly with some of the lesser known characters. Okay. This one is a bit longer, right? The speaker extended their utterance by using conjunctions like because and but. There were probably a few possible TRPs in there, but if they didn't pause while speaking, it could be tough to jump in. This may have been intentional on their part to ensure that you didn't jump in. When you want to extend your turn, you can add conjunctions and omit pauses. You can also alter your intonation, waiting until the end of your turn to lower it, because a lower intonation signals the end of your turn. Savvy conversation hogs employ these tactics to keep talking and talking, so be ready to fight for your airspace. A great way to do this is to politely interrupt them with phrases like, absolutely, and guess what else? Or a quick point on that note, or before you go on, notice how these interjections are building on what the person is saying. That ensures that your interruption sounds collaborative rather than combative. It softens the fact that you're putting an end to their soliloquy. B 
Be sure that when you do this, that you are using assertive language. Avoid hedges and superfluous fillers like so, um, hmm. You can even use a slightly louder voice with a lower pitch, but resist the temptation to speak rapidly. You don't want to sound desperate. Rather, you want to command their attention. Now, it doesn't end there. You may notice someone else that wants to add a thought. This is an opportunity to help them get into the conversation. Being the ace conversationalist you are, you notice the person is struggling to signal turn-taking. So in this case, I task you with finding a TRP and jump in for them. When you do, you can say something like, Jane, were you about to say something? Or Matt, did you have something to add? Or maybe we pause for a second to discuss. Does anyone else have an idea on this? It's helpful to say the name of the person and then turn towards them signaling inclusivity. Smile and make them comfortable speaking their mind. Remember, the quiet people often see things that the blabbermouths don't. So when they speak, listen up. Okay, so there's your interruption game plan. Let's quickly recap. One, listen for your TRP, transition relevance place. A TRP might be where there's a pause, when the sentence ends, or when there's a falling intonation. Two, when it comes, seize it. Jump into the conversation and guide it toward a place that you want to go. Number three, keep an eye out for others who might be struggling to get in and give them a helping hand. Oh, by the way, that final one is a total pro move. Others will really appreciate your stepping in on their behalf so that everyone can be heard. Doing so not only scores you good karma points, you also build your reputation as a capable leader. Cha-ching! So, now that I've shared our thoughts, I want to hear about what works for you. What other strategies can you share with the Exploring community to participate in group conversation where there seems to be one dominant voice? And what challenges have you encountered with getting a turn to speak? Share those two things with me in the comments below. And if you loved this lesson, please be sure to let me know. You can give this video a thumbs up on YouTube. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to join our tribe of explorers so that you never miss a lesson. And if you ring that bell, you'll get notified about our weekly live streams and video lessons. Email this video to a friend or a coworker who also wants to supercharge their social strategies. And while we're at it, feel free to share this with your Facebook and Twitter friends as well. And remember, the write-up of these lessons are always available on our blog at exploring.co blog. With that, have an awesome week, Explorers. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time for your next Exploring lesson. Happy Exploring!